Hey everybody, Brian and Leslie Fothery here. This is the next and newest episode of the Unbreakable Podcast. We're so glad that you're with us. Welcome uh, everybody. Yeah, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Uh, it's still the month of June and we are still talking about love, 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 <laughs> and marriage and somebody getting in a marriage carriage, something mm -hmm. like that now that someone goes. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, anyway. Um, I'm playing, but we're still talking. Hope after the last podcast you went and had fun. Those that you know, you know. Otherwise, we don't know. We're not telling you the secret. Yep. You have to go back and listen to it. Yep. Um, either on YouTube or through the podcast. Either one. We don't care. But yep. either way. So today we're going to continue talking about love, but we're going to talk about a specific thing in love. We want to talk to you about breaking or beating the odds mm -hmm. in marriage yeah. uh, because the statistics and the odds are actually against you. Huh. Who knew? That seems uh, to make sense to me. Does it? Yeah. The devil would not want you to be succeeding at marriage. Okay. And so in this world, he feels he has the influence to take you down and yeah. take your marriage out. Yeah. And so that makes sense to me that he would, he would work so hard at that. Yeah. Which is why we, as Christian couples and married couples, have to work all the harder. Yeah, you have to be diligent. The Bible talks about being diligent to guard your heart. Mm -hmm. um, and, and your heart is a big part of what's involved with your marriage and your love with each other. Yeah. So you have to be diligent. It means to work hard. It means to make extra effort. Because mm -hmm. uh, the numbers are not good. Um, I did uh, a wedding for a dear friend just recently, at the end of last year. And... Um, it was her second, his third. Mm -hmm. And when we sat down with them, we went to uh, a late lunch and had lunch with them. And and I'm like, okay, you know, this is number three for you and number two for you. And he's like, yep, third time's a charm. And I looked at him and I came on a little strong. I'm like, actually, it's not. Nope. And he's like, what do you mean? I said, statistically, uh, if you're married for a third time, you have one-fourth of a chance of making it in three-quarters of a chance. Mm -hmm. It's over 75% yeah. of third marriages end in divorce. Mm -hmm. um, and I said, and we want we want you to beat the odds. You know? And so we spent several months in counseling with them, in marriage counseling, mm -hmm. helping them set themselves up for success right. long-term. Mm -hmm. and, and I looked at her and said, and for you, uh, second marriage, it's well over 60%. I mm -hmm. said, so, um, now in her case, she wasn't bringing a bunch of baggage. He was bringing some. Um, and so it depends on the kind of baggage you're bringing in, yeah. in, in the things of that nature yeah. as well. Uh, like in her in her case, it was not her fault, not her problem uh, that she had been divorced. And she had stayed single for quite some time, so she found the right guy. Mm -hmm. So I believe that that marriage is going to last a really long time. And, yeah. and, uh, and so far, so good. And, yeah. uh, but it's new. They're newlyweds still. Mm -hmm. So anyway, the odds are against you. Um, I'm looking at some notes, so I look away from you on the camera. I apologize. On the podcast, you can't see this. You don't care. Um, <laughs> but marriage uh, rate in America. Um, we're going to talk specifically about America, not the yes. world. Right. Um, we could go the world, but it skews the numbers for what we're trying to reach uh, and the mandate that we've been given by mm -hmm. God, which is to help... Mm -hmm. Um, the marriages in the American church. Um, but the marriage rate in America is at its lowest level since 1867. 67. That's crazy. Yep. And and we in 1867, the reason it's so low is because we just got out of a civil war. Mm -hmm. And there were a lot of dead people. Mm -hmm. Not to be blunt, but there wasn't a whole lot of marrying going on because right. there wasn't a lot of people to get married. Yeah. Um, yep. And so it was a problem. So that's, that's a bad number. Um, and then... The amount of marriages has dropped from a little over 2.6 million a year, people in America get married, mm -hmm. um, to 1.9 million. Who so are that, married. To, yeah. Who are getting married. Mm -hmm. And so literally over 600,000 marriages are not happening right. in the United States right. that were happening. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a big deal. It's a, so it's what a big we're deal. saying there then is that people, not they aren't necessarily having divorces right they just aren't necessarily getting Being married, married. <laughs> and so that's a problem too yeah because in, in the christian faith that's a problem because yeah. god mandates that couples are married right 
That's exactly right. Not just living together, right. getting married. Yep. Yeah, and in a large portion of this generation that's coming up, they're cohabitating instead of getting married. Right. Uh, and so the cohabitation rate has gone up, mm -hmm. uh, but also the divorce rate's gone down actually in the last five, ten years. Right. But that number is skewed mm -hmm. because of the number of people who aren't actually getting married. Right. Now they're still breaking up, and right. they're actually breaking up more frequently mm -hmm. than if they had been married. Mm -hmm. So people are getting together, they're having a child, maybe two, and then they're like, you know what? One of them says, not for me. Mm -hmm. And we've seen it both ways. We've seen yeah. the mom walk away, we've yep. seen the dad walk away. Yep. Uh, typically it's the dad, not the mom, mm -hmm. who walks away. Yeah. Um, and then goes and does that same thing with another lady. Mm -hmm. And then has a child or two, and, yeah. um, and then um, does the same process over and over and over. You know, it's the, what they say the definition of insanity is, is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. So, you know, and even uh, look at my notes, in the 1950s, 80% of all households in America were married couples. Mm -hmm. It's a huge number. So in less than 100 years, that's dropped to under 50%. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's, that's, a, that's a big, big drop. It is a big drop. Now, let's get to the divorce rate. Almost 50% of all marriages in the United States will end in separation or divorce. Yeah. That includes first, second, third, 25th, whatever number it and is. And that includes whether you're a Christian marriage or whether you're yes. just married and not, not a Christian. You know, yeah. you're a secular person. Yeah. And it's estimated that 41% of all first marriages end up in a divorce. Right. That's a huge number. Right. And again, I think that number is actually higher because of the amount of people that are cohabitating yeah. and not actually getting married. Right. So I think of that number, if you would put those numbers in there, I, I would imagine, and I haven't done a rabbit hole deep dive mm -hmm. on this, yeah. um, but I would imagine that it would probably go up to 60 plus. Mm -hmm. I don't think it'd be in the 70s, but I think it'd be in the, mid, yeah. the, the, the low to mid 60s is yeah. where I think that would fall. Um, so second marriage is 60%. Yeah, that's pretty close. Second, yeah. sixty percent of all second marriages uh, end in a divorce, and it's seventy-three percent. I was a little high on that. Seventy-three percent of third marriages end in a divorce, and the United States has the sixth highest divorce rate in, in the, the world. world. Yeah. So we're this educated society. We're, um, you know, well off in America. We have all yeah. these things that are supposedly going for us. Yeah. And then. You know, minus any weird stuff going on right now, um, and since COVID, that just seems to have messed our world up. Yeah, it does. But um, but we're supposed to be this really on top of it kind of society, right? And yet we can't stay married. I mean, we can't get along with one other person and keep a family together. Yeah. So that's a really bad um, indictment on us. I think too that um, the idea that um, we are not getting married and we're but we're still getting together with with someone right breaking it off getting back together with someone else breaking it off we are hurt people yeah we are broken people right because you can't physically join together with someone spend intimate time with them like that be part of their world and then break that off yeah and not be injured somehow you're injured <laughs> yeah. and and it may just be emotionally it could be physically it could be um spiritually definitely could, spiritually or, and mostly spiritually and a lot of people don't even realize that right but spiritually that messes you up yeah. because you aren't made to do that you're made to be married to one person right and be one with that person yeah for all of your life that's what God intended. Yeah. So we have a lot of people who are a lot of hurt people and a lot of messed up people then trying to get together with someone else right. that messes that person up. And it's like a, it's kind of like a disease. Kind of like. Kind it's of pandemic like a disease, level. Like pandemic level. Um, yeah. Not so good. it's bad. Yeah. So we, we want to talk to you about getting the right mindset going into marriage. Right. Um, there's a video we've already done uh, that you should go back and look at and it's on the podcast as well mm -hmm. um, and it's 
the title of his marriage is a marathon, mm -hmm. um, and and we just really hit the tip of the iceberg on that podcast. Right. Yeah. Um, but you should go back and listen to that. That will help you with your mindset coming into marriage. Yeah. Um, uh, major league, um, and I'm gonna give you a quick example. Um, it's been a few years back. Um, it's a person that I know. It's a guy, and, and guys tend to boast about their conquests yes. a lot more than women do. Women, women are a whole lot more discreet. Mm -hmm. uh, they may sleep around, but they're not telling everybody who they're sleeping with. Um, but men are not as discreet. So I'm talking to this guy, and he said, how long have you been married? And at the time, I was pushing 30 years, for over 30 years now, but at the time, I was pushing 30 years. He said, oh, man, what a bum deal. I said, what do you mean? He goes, I'm sleeping with three to five women every single month. And, wow. and he was bragging on it, right, in front of this other group of guys. And um, so he finishes bragging. I said, well, that's pretty impressive. He's like, yeah, I know, right? I said, but really the question is this. What's more impressive? Being able to find three to five women that you can get drunk and sleep with for a moment or finding someone that you can live with for 30 plus years? Yeah. What's more impressive? So I think the fact that I've kept my wife happy and satisfied and, and willing to sleep with me all through our marriage. Right. A lot more impressive than your conquest. Yeah. So when you when you accomplish that, come back and let's have a visit. And the other guys room like, ooh, ah, <laughs> burn, all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, it, it's reality. And yeah. so you have to change your mindset, uh, men especially, because we are by nature hunters. We are by nature people who are trying to find someone to conquer, to have a We're conquest. Yeah. And we want to do that. Mm -hmm. And that's part of our DNA. And that's mm -hmm. not a bad thing. It's just learning how to do it under control. Because right. yeah. I still want a conquest, but she's sitting next to me. Yeah, I, I still want to conquer her. I still want to uh, uh, do things with her, but I, I don't want to go out and find someone else. I just don't want to do that. I, I want to have time with my wife. So I've changed my mindset yeah. from being a single-minded, not in a sense of focus, but single-person-minded mm -hmm. to a married person-minded. Right. We tell couples all the time mm -hmm. when we do marriage counseling, said you have to understand that as you get married, you're no longer single. It seems so simple. Right. But it's exceptionally profound. Yeah. Because when you do that one minor, to us it's minor, but maybe to you it's major, that one minor shift from being single person minded to married person minded, right. male or female, right. that sets you up for better success mm -hmm. in your marriage. And mm -hmm. that helps you beat the odds. Mm -hmm. Because a, a lot of men, and some women, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say the most, I say it's more men than women, but some women still looking for the greener grass on the other side of the fence. Yeah. So they're like, well, I'll marry this guy or I'll marry this girl. I will marry them until I find something better. better. Yeah. Or I'll marry them because I really like them in this moment. I really love them in this moment. Um, and I will do that and, and I will continue to do that. However, I'm, I'm always open to options. I have other options. I have a, a someone I know who um, they entered into their marriage with the mindset of, well, we'll see how long this lasts. Yeah. And literally what they that, said. That's literally what they said. On we'll, their wedding We'll see day. how long it lasts. And I was like, okay, so you're not entering in with the idea of it's going to last forever. You know, it's going to last the whole. Right. They, they already had defeat on their mind. Right. Before they ever got into it. Right. Also, I wanted to speak to something that he said. He said he's still conquering me. Don't I don't want any bad comments about that or anything. He's not conquering me in the sense of doing anything wrong towards no. me. But he is capturing my heart every day, every week, every month. He's capturing my heart. Yeah. He is. He is um, finds me as the thing that he's seeking after. Yeah, absolutely. It's not necessarily a conquest, but he is seeking after me and, and winning me. Yeah. He's winning me all the time. So yeah. I Thanks for to clarify that's a, that's a good clarifier. I don't know why anybody it's, to think something's going on wrong. No, well, I'm not <laughs> hurting her. I'm not no. just you know throwing her down saying, Woman do this now. No. None of that no, none no, of that's no, no, going no. on. It's a mutual relationship. It is. But I am chasing her. Yes. Um, not just as a husband, but as a friend, mm -hmm. as a lover, mm -hmm. as a partner mm -hmm. um, in, in business and ministry. I'm right. chasing her. Right. And winning all me the time. over all the time. All the time. Yeah. 
I, I don't take it for granted. I guess right. would have been a better use mm -hmm. of my my language. But mm -hmm. anyway, those those are some of the odds um, against you. Right. Those are just some of the things that are saying you can't make it. Now we want to talk to you about overcoming those odds. Yes. Beating those odds. Yes. And we, we did um, a divorce proof your marriage challenge about a year or so ago. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we did multiple ways of how to divorce proof your marriage. Mm -hmm. um, one of the steps mm -hmm. to divorce proofing your marriage is guarding it. And yeah. there's different ways to guard your marriage. So yeah. we want to talk to you about how to guard your marriage today. Um, and we, we have so many ways to do this so we'll, we'll we got a list in front of us mm -hmm. so we're just going to kind of walk through that list a little bit yep. and and we're going to talk to you um we may do another podcast on this but we'll get through some of this we won't get through all of it uh because there's a lot of detail if you want more uh just email us at fatherlyfamilyministries at gmail.com mm -hmm. if you want more content uh this kind of content then be sure to like uh, share and subscribe the video. Right. Uh, we, we we appreciate when you do that, uh, and so do that so we can get more content to mm -hmm. you. Yeah. Uh, so let's let's start by uh, how to physically guard your marriage. Why don't you start on that? Okay. When you're physically guarding your marriage, you have to um, <clears throat> remember that you are loving your spouse spouse unconditionally. <clears throat> so you want to uh, not. Pick and choose when you're going to love them. Right. But, you know, like Brian and I always share how we, we wake up each morning and choose to love the other one. Right. We choose to walk in love towards them. We choose to be um, friendly and kind and generous towards yeah. the other one. We choose love every single morning. We show love to one another without, um, you know, if one's grumpy, if one's not, if one's... Um, doing something that we don't care for, we still are showing love towards one another. Right. So I will definitely make sure that I have rubbed him across the back during the day. I will kiss him coming in and out of the room. We um, are showing physical love to one another, hold his hand, um, just all kinds of things like that where, where you show love, things that you do physically to show love. Yeah. You guard your marriage when you do that because you are reminding yourself and reminding your spouse that, oh, you are the one, you are my one. Right. You are my one, and I love you, yeah. and I'm guarding my marriage by doing that. I don't pull away from my spouse when we have hard times. I don't pull away from Brian when we're having a financial problem. I don't pull away from him when we're having an argument or a disagreement about something. Yeah. Um, I don't draw away from him or pull away from him um, because I'm just trying to avoid something I don't like that he's doing. Whatever it is, whatever's going on, we don't pull away from each other. We always right. draw to one another. Right. We draw close to one another. And we talk it out. And we make sure that we don't distance ourselves from right. one another. Um, a lot of times the enemy likes to use things like arguments, um, bad behavior, yep. uh, different character traits that are you know, disappointing or frustrating or whatever. He likes to use all those things to drive a wedge yeah. between you and your spouse in your marriage. And that way he feels like he can um, send you on the way to divorce. And we don't want that to happen. Yeah. And I'll say this, your, your sex life, your physical guarding, mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're referring to um, PDA. We're referring to holding hands, kissing. We're also referring mm -hmm. to your sex life. Uh, your sex life should not be determined by what's going on in your circumstances. Right. And and your sex life, the quality of it is not determined by the quantity of it. It's determined by how intimate you are with each other. Right. Um, of course, if you're newlywed, quantity is abundant. And the longer you go, it becomes more quality mm -hmm. uh, and not as much quantity. Uh, unless you're an exception to the rule, which they're out there. Um, <laughs> and, and both are good. And, and so we don't use sex as a weapon. Right. Um, if we're having a disagreement and um, comes time and she wants to be intimate or I want to be intimate, we still give ourselves to each other even though we're in a moment of disagreement, even though we're in a moment of struggle, whatever that struggle might be. Mm -hmm. um, we still make sure that we stay connected physically mm -hmm. because the Bible says when man and woman comes together, they come together mm -hmm. as a physical interaction. 
and it's in that physical interaction that they become one. Right. So if I want to stay one with mm -hmm. Leslie, I need to make sure that I stay one with her physically and I guard my marriage right. physically. The other way to guard your marriage physically is to not to be physical with anybody else. Yes, exactly. You, if if exactly. you're physical with someone else, even if it's a flirty touch, uh, a flirty hug. There should be no flirty with anybody but your spouse. <laughs> no flirty whatsoever. No, but it can happen. It uh, can happen, but you need to really pay attention yes. that you're not doing that or even falling into just the temptation of that. Right. Yeah, yeah, really guarding against that. Because you can have someone, um, you know, touching you and, and loving you and hugging you and, and it becomes an inappropriate thing just because there's a commonality right. and a yeah. familiarity to it. Yeah. Um, so you have to guard mm -hmm. not only with each other, but for each other. Right. Um, if some guy walks up to Leslie and puts his arm on her or around her in a way that I don't like, I'm going to remove his arm <laughs> yep. from her yeah. and depending on how far he goes from him. Mm -hmm. So yeah. just one of those things, yeah. but I'm going to guard her physically. I'm going to guard me physically uh, by not doing things right. that I should not do. Anything else to add to physically here? No, I want to jump on the next thing though. The next thing is he was talking about how um, you uh, have to act married. Part of uh -huh. acting married is spending time together. Yeah. So I choose to spend my time with my husband and he chooses to spend his time with me. And we look for things that we like in common and we spend time together doing those common things that right. we enjoy. Um, sometimes it leans towards what he likes. Sometimes it leans towards what I like, right. but we do it together because we love one another and we are spending our time mm -hmm. together, not out with other people every night of the week. Right. That doesn't mean we never go out with other people right. or we never go meet someone for lunch or coffee or whatever, sure. but the majority of our time, we spend it together because we like one another. We're best friends. What? Yeah, we do. <laughs> he didn't know that, but we do. We like each I've other. I've learned something today. <laughs> we like each other. We're best friends. And so we like to spend our time together. Um, part of that spending time is FaceTime. Uh -huh. Oh, devices in our world today are just, they're wonderful and they're terrible all at the same time. Yeah. Um, I am a big person for FaceTime. I want you to put your device down and look at me in the yep. eyes when we're having a discussion. Yep. And he actually wants the same thing from me. And we can both get tempted to not be looking at one another. And we'll challenge each other because like, yeah. I'm talking to her and she's sitting there and she's going through a text or a, a messenger yeah. or scrolling on her Facebook or mm -hmm. looking at a, a reel or whatever. And we do all that, right? Um, and, and I don't have her attention. I'll just stop and she'll yeah. me what watch it. I don't have your attention. I want your attention. Yeah. And the same way back. It, you know, so sometimes just, he's scrolling, scrolling, yeah. trying to do his stuff. And I'm like, honey, did you hear what I said? Because if you don't have their attention, right. their face, if you don't have their face, you don't have their attention, they can't hear right. or listen. Or understand. Or understand if you don't have that. So that's really important. Yeah. And it's a really big part of guarding your marriage. Everybody wants to feel appreciated. Yeah. Everybody wants to feel like they're heard and listened to. And so if you can't accomplish that in between the two of you, right. that's, that's, it's not going to lead to something good. Yeah, so. and, and if she's watching or listening to something that seems important, I said, let me know when you're done. So mm -hmm. I, I need a moment of your time. Yes. And I'll let her finish what she's doing. I'm not just dictating. Right. And she's like, oh, he needs to talk to me. And, or vice versa. Mm -hmm. It works both ways. Yeah. And so we'll finish it. Because I'll, sometimes I'll just turn it off, whatever I'm doing, and mute it or mm -hmm. put the phone down. I said, no, no, you can finish it. No. I want to hear what you have to say. Right. I can go back to this. Right. I can hit pause. I am a really big one for walking into a room talking. He hates it. <laughs> and, <laughs> That's true. And I have to really work at come into the room, see what he's doing, get his attention before I start talking. Um, it's a, a it's a thing. But um, <laughs> women, I think, tend to do that. We're just talkers. Yeah. And so when we come in, we're talking already. And he has not anywhere near where I'm at. And so I need to wait, get his attention, and then set him up into what I have to say yeah. <laughs> so that he gets it, so that we are clarifying. And, and, I, clar and I tell her, clearly her to, communicating like, I didn't hear a thing you just said. I mean, I heard you talking, but I didn't hear yeah. you talking uh, because you didn't get my attention. Right. Um, and there's a story that we know of, of, of a guy that had a very large business, ran out of his home, 
and he had what five or six secretaries in his home running his business and he said that he would walk through the room and they're all talking to him all these ladies are talking to him and he said i could hear the noise but i didn't distinguish the voice yeah. because no one actually got my attention right. so he actually taught them mm -hmm. how to get his attention yes so he would because he wanted to hear what they had to say yes he wasn't trying to be rude yep. he wanted because helping him run his business he needs to know what they're talking mm -hmm. about it's the same thing yeah i need to know what she's talking about she needs to know what i'm talking about right but she does tend to just walk in the room and she's already halfway in her conversation yeah and i'm not part of that conversation yet uh so i'm like okay you're coming in mid-conversation can you take me back to the beginning let's start this thing over and she's more than happy to do that because sometimes she doesn't even realize she's doing it. Yeah. She, it's just part of her nature, and that's okay. And and I could do the same thing. I can walk in. I, I've I'm I've learned and I'm still learning mm -hmm. how to walk in a room, observe and listen, and then either engage in the conversation that's already going on, or if I needed to redirect it to something I need to talk about, look for an opening. Stay yeah. engaged. Yeah. But look for an opening. Say, oh, can this is all great, but can I talk about X Y Z? And so. There, there's something yeah. to that. Okay, so one last thing on the spend time together and communicate. Um, Brian and I are so um, connected to each other. We are so love each other and love to spend time together that when we do go out and do separate things, very difficult for us because when yeah. we come home, yeah. we feel like our spouse has missed part of our life that day. Yeah. And so then it's a matter of I need to catch them up on everything that uh -huh. happened so that they are a part of it because I always want him to be part of what I'm doing and he wants me to be part of what he's doing. Yeah. So we have to really um, make sure we, we um, reconnect and download information and make sure that the other one is caught up on what happened and what influenced our life that day. Yep. And um, so taking time to do that, that's another way to guard your marriage, to make sure that you share with one another what they what the other one has missed out on and if yeah. you work jobs separately you know we are blessed that we get to do our life together in ministry and in um, what we do work. business yeah. and everything but there are others who you know you work separately well then come home and share things with each other catch up your life with each other so that you're on the same page that's a really good thing to do and don't hide it from each other I mean because then that puts a seed of doubt and a seed yeah. of distrust um, don't do that. Mm -hmm. Even with something that's negative, have that conversation. Because guys, your wife wants to know. Ladies, mm -hmm. your husband wants to know. Yep. Um, now, you don't just come in and, and dump mm -hmm. on each other. Right. You come in and you have a conversation. Mm -hmm. um, and you're like, maybe you do need to dump. You're like, can I just <laughs> dump my day on you for a minute? Are you in a place that I can do that without destroying your day? Mm -hmm. And, well, yeah, Okay. Then, then have that conversation. So it's still being sensitive to one another, still right. protecting yeah. one another and, and guarding each other um, and doing those things um, so that your your time together mm -hmm. is quality time and not right. just argument time, right. not just dump time, um, just times for all of that. Mm -hmm. and, and it's learning how to grow up and be mature right. and have mature adult conversations. Mm -hmm. I know, that's just great. <laughs> but you can do it. The last thing that I want to bring up before we end our podcast yeah. today is um, watch what's, why well, say watch, but pay attention to what's being said about your spouse, mm. to what's happening toward your spouse. Okay, so I am, I'd like, if, if someone starts speaking poorly of my husband, I will not join in on that, <laughs> but I will stand up and say, um, excuse you, but that is not okay with me and you need to stop right there I don't want to hear any more um, even if that fam if that person's a family member if that person is one of our children if they have something to say against my spouse it needs to be said in a proper way or not said at all and I will guard him against those words but I also will guard myself what am I saying about my spouse I want to make sure that if I share something it's not negative toward him it doesn't say something um, about his life or speak things into his life that I don't want to see. Right. I am watching what I say and how I am allowing people to talk about my spouse. And Brian will do the same thing for me. Absolutely. He definitely will get his hackles up if somebody starts coming against me. That is not okay with him. 
And so allowing people to degrade or speak down about or act poorly towards your spouse is a, another way that you can stop and guard your marriage. Yeah. Protect that spouse. Be their best defense. Be their best friend who will not allow something to be said or done against them. Anything to add to that? No, that's good. <laughs> she she could probably preach that a little while. I could. Uh, she could. She could. <laughs> All right. Well, that's that's our time for today for our podcast. Uh, we're glad you're here. Keep tuning in. We've got more coming up. Yeah. Next week we'll be still on this topic. And uh, I don't know if we're going to still be talking about guarding your marriage. We'll figure something out. Um, loving and guarding your spouse. So do it. Just, yep. just do that. Um, be sure, as we said earlier, if you're on the YouTube channel, uh, that's uh, youtube.com backslash at uh, the Unbreakable Family. Mm -hmm. I think it's at or just backslash the Unbreakable Family. Mm -hmm. um, but if you type in the Unbreakable Family it'll come up. on YouTube, it'll come up. And be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Help yes. us to get the word out and, and bless other people. Mm -hmm. um, don't keep us to yourselves. You know, be sure to share that out there. Yes. Um, also, and quick, thank you for doing that. Absolutely. And a quick shameless plug. Uh, Leslie's book is still out there. If you haven't got it yet, the, the fam family, the family, family manual. manual, a practical guide to raising a Christian family is still mm -hmm. out there. You can get it anywhere that you buy books. Yep. Uh, we would love it if you went to our website, theunbreakablefamily.com, yep. and bought it there. Um, and let's just keep going after that book, and because it's an heirloom quality information, so it'll mm -hmm. help you through every phase of your life on how to raise a Christian family, and it's really critical. Mm -hmm. in this culture and at this time and season so shameless plug for that again like share and subscribe hit the little button do your thing you know it pops up at the end of the video you can do it all right love you praying for you and we'll talk to you soon talk to you later bye for now